open, usually that's not uh, that's not possible. You got this door limit switch right here, and that allows you to get it in there. I would say that the person in uh, charge of the maintenance or whatever should take this key with them so that not a regular person who doesn't have the skills to work inside the cabinet can go in there. Uh, if you got a shift manager or something like that that you know you trust or whatever, they can go inside the cabinet and reset breakers or something like that with this key right here. Turn it, you can open up the, up, up the, up the cabinet, right? Uh, this is that you this is that that log button right there with the USB stick. If I press that, it'll save it to the USB stick. Uh, let's go back to uh, we did messages menu. Now this is where you start to get to your parameters. So from your we're gonna get a little complicated now, right? And what I would say with this stuff is the most important thing is to log all your parameters. Write them all down. I took pictures of them already, but write them all down. And the reason why I take pictures and I put them on our drive is because I put them on our customer drive, our, our, uh, our customer folder on our drive is because if y'all call and say it's tearing film or something like that, I can go see if y'all made any uh, if y'all made any changes to the parameters and that's probably why. I can tell, oh, when I left and it was running, y'all had, I had this is this value, this is this value, this is this value. So. I would say always keep your parameters written down and everything like that. That way, if somebody touches them, you can go back, right? Now, yo, you know what? Can we get a, uh, let's get a pallet through here so I can tell y'all about all the positions. It, in, in automatic mode, it's, it's easier to explain. We only need, we only need, uh, we, we can run a couple of them. Oh, I didn't get the film out. That's how I was trying to hope it's going to come. It's not protected, though. <laughs> Make way, you know? Yeah, it's not protected. And then, uh... Notice that if I'm in automatic mode, if I'm in automatic mode, I can't do nothing. Only in manual mode I can move anything. And if you see how the how the button is now orange highlighted on some, that means that it's at the it's at the very it's at the limit switch. So that means that I can't go no higher. I can't separate these no more. I can't bring these no more separate. They all at the limit switch, right? And let's wait until we get a pallet. So basically, I'm explaining the way the sequence goes. The film suction grippers go to three positions. They go to a waiting position, a, a, a suck position, and an open position. So the, the film comes down, the, the, the uh, suction boxes, they go to a waiting position, where they're about this far away from the film, they go to a sucking position, and then they go to an open position where they open the film up. The hoist has three positions. It has a pickup position where it goes into the film, it has a uh, the stretching position which is the whole way down and then it has a transfer position which is where it goes to put the pallet uh put the film up underneath the pallet three positions of the hoist the three positions of the, the uh, sleds and crimping bows it's a pickup position where it goes into the film stretching position where it goes out uh wide enough and long enough to go around the film and then transfer position where it goes underneath the film that's the three positions of the uh crimping of the sleds and carriage that's the three major uh, positions. That's what makes the. That's what helps you film the. Uh, uh, that's what helps you hood the hood the uh, the pallet, right? Now, we talked about that before. It's a it's a uh, ultrasonic sensor right there on the other side of the uh, of the hoist. We can look at that. That measures the height of the pallet, and that uh, tells the that tells this thing how much film to how much film to make to prepare a hood, right? So if you have a if you have a pallet that's too short, I've already put parameters in there, but I'll show you where they is. If it's a pallet that's too short, I put a parameter in there and say that if it's this this height or lower, pick it out. And then I also got a I also got a maximum height. If it's this height. If it's this height or higher, kick it out. The reason why we got a maximum height is because if you set a pallet in there 
with 15 layers or something like that or something that maybe something's on top of the pallet and I can't actually stretch and get around it, if it's too high for the hoist, then it's gonna kick it out. It's just gonna say go on through because we can't, you too, you too tall. So that's what that is. You can see that uh, here in uh, the machine parameters, that's the, the screwdriver is the machine parameters. And then you got a uh, film transport and it shows, uh, no, that's not it. Second page. Transport. There it is, transport. So, let me do that again. Machine parameters, and then transport. And it says smallest allowed package height, 2,500. Right now you can see the actual distance that it's measuring. It's measuring from there to the conveyor. It's actually seeing a conveyor and the conveyor is about 700 millimeters above the ground. So that's what it's measuring right now. When you see the pallet come in, when you see the pallet come in, you'll see that thing jump up to 27, I don't know, maybe, I don't, 2,700, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Should be around that height or whatever. I want, I let y'all see that come in here. The other stuff, don't change it. Like if you start changing this stuff, you'll affect, you'll affect the height, so don't change it. The only thing I would say on this page to change is the maximum allowable and the minimum uh, smallest allowable. This is something y'all gotta play with. If y'all if y'all got 10 layers on there and y'all don't wanna hood it, y'all have to see what value you get for 10 layers and then put that in as the, as the limit for the smallest. You know what I mean? So right now you see it went up to 27, 4, 2734 was about the highest. So that's in the range. So it is gonna, it's gonna put it. You got their max set at? I got their max set at 3,400. And then y'all do, what you say, eight layers? Nine. Nine. So let's, let's lower this a little bit. So right now, this is the waiting position for the suction boxes. That's the sucking position. And that's the open position. That, that's the open position right here. That's open position. The hoist is going to pick up position. And I forgot, the, it's going to crimping position. This is the crimping position. The next is the stretching position. Stretching position. Then it goes down. Then it goes to the transfer position which is here, that's the transfer position. And then that's it. And then the hoist goes up and allows the, uh, gets out of the way of the pallet and then it's transferred out. So that's the, that's the sequence of how things working on the parameter. So if we go in here for the uh, hood lid, stretch carriage crimping position, remember when it was crimping the film on there? The stretch carriage crimping position is gonna be this, this way right here, how far apart they are when it's crimping. The stretch sled is gonna be how far this way apart they are this way when they crimping. Correction hood length is if I wanna add, if, if say my, my sensor is making a film and it's making it too short or too long, I can subtract and add value to that. So if I'm getting too much film, I can put on some. If I'm getting too less film, I can put I can take off some. Now that, that ultrasonic sensor is not, 100% accurate. So I would always say give a little bit more film so if it makes it too short, it's still able to be pulled all the way down. So the film being too long, yeah, I can back out a little bit, but if I back out that every other every other pallet is not being able to be pulled underneath, then I know that I probably need to increase my fit, my correction hood length. And this is in millimeters, 400 millimeters, so which is about this much. So that's how much extra film I'm giving it to go up underneath the pallet. So now, this is the uh, 
the crimping motor, the uh, sleds and, and uh, the sleds and carriage are in crimping uh, pickup position. They go up, then it goes to crimping position once again. Then it goes to stretch position. Then it goes to stretch. You can control the speed of how how fast the hoist go down. Then it goes to transfer position. That means transferring the film off of the crimping bows onto the pallet. We go to the next parameters. And these are all product parameters. I would say machine parameters, you don't need to touch them. They should be set and good for everything. They should work on every product. Your product parameters should be, should be what changed. That means that your product is maybe you got a different film, you got a different pallet height or something like that. That's your product parameters. So if you want to make another product for a non-layered pallet with a certain film, that's a product parameter. Where are the machine parameters? The, the machine parameters is from the main menu, the screwdriver. Okay. Got it. So we really don't touch that. Yeah, really don't touch that. Okay. Uh, I can go over this right quick until we get another pallet. Modes of operation is just like we've seen on the main on the main pre-selection. You can turn on each uh, each, uh, each part of the system individually. Uh, the, the transport and the stretcher automatically. Uh, the interfaces, basically. This is a way to test the, test the, uh, the transport over there. When the customer is uh, sending us a pallet, he gonna say ready for transfer. That means he got a pallet ready for us. And we saying we got a pallet that we, we, we can take a pallet. So that means that we ready for, uh, we ready for takeover and they ready to transfer. When those two things are lit up, they gonna, our conveyors is gonna start. Now, and if they send us something, this is a way to check if something is going wrong or something like that. If they send us something and we not, and our motors ain't moving, we can go see, you're not sending us a signal, but you're sending us a pallet. So something's wrong there, you know? That's more so a maintenance thing. You know, with electricity stuff happen, you know what I mean? A wire could be loose or something like that, gotta check. So this looks okay right now? Yeah, right now, we have a conveyor clear. Okay. To, to take the pallet onto the turntable. Okay. But they don't have a pallet to give us. Okay. So when they get a pallet to give us, that light is gonna come on. This light will come on. Right, that ready for okay. transfer light is gonna come on. Got it. This is a quick way to check the I.O. between the two machines. All right. Uh, the transport complete. And this is, I wanna sh show y'all this because I'm pretty sure y'all gonna have this problem. Interfaces. This is a big problem that we always have with customers, customer uh, interlocking signals. Right. The reason our, our programming is a little bit more complex. We, German company, of course we are. So basically, we always like to send a signal back to the customer saying, hey, we got the pallet. You sent us, you, we, we asked for the pallet, you sent us the pallet, we got it. That way, you can stop sending it. They don't do that. They do a timer. They send us a pallet and the roller conveyors go until they clear and then they roll until a certain amount of time but they don't never, they never use this signal from us. So that means that if they time out and we had a problem on our system, they gonna stop sending us the pallet, but they, but we not, we haven't, we haven't told you we have done with it. We still need it. So if that happens to where the pallet is halfway through there, the only way to get out of that is to go to the manual function, uh, turn on these two things and bump the conveyors forward. That's the only way. Because our things, if we got a pallet going in the middle of the transport, if I stop my pallet, Right here, they haven't even hit my photo op. If I press stop in manual mode, I can sit there, I can walk and go, go to lunch, come back. If I press start, even though that pallet ain't in front of no photo eyes, it remembers, hey, when I was in automatic, I was sending the pallet and I wasn't finished doing that. That function right there is not there. If we get a pallet in between two photo eyes, it don't know where it is. From, they, from the customer to us, it don't know. So. That's, that's one of the problems that we always got with the transfer of pallets. They use timers, we use we use memory. We say, I remember I was doing this. So you'd have to go in there and you'd have to- You'd have to go in there and manual, manually push the ma pallet. Manually yeah. move it. That's the only way. And we've done on the palletizer from time to time. Yeah. We've gone in there and actually manually yeah. moved it. Okay. Yeah, so it's the, it's the same it's the same concept of whatever y'all had going on before. Okay. Uh, I would always say like when you pr when you press in any motor, I was telling them before, when you're doing any of these things in manual mode, Always watch what the heck you're doing because that this right here don't have limit switches. It don't say, okay, I can't push my pallet. It don't know where the pallet is. It could, the pallet could be a little bit in front of the photo wire, a little bit behind the photo wire, or right in front of the photo wire. You can actually 
move this pallet onto the dang transport, uh, the, the, the centering conveyor and it with this conveyor not going. So you need to watch what you're doing. That's why the HMI is oriented right here because I can see everything, right? When I'm moving, I can see everything, the whole view of the machine. That's the way it's supposed to be. Anything that you're controlling, you have to have eyesight of it. Uh, uh, what else? Go to the settings. Machine info. This is this. This is y'all tag on the machine. Uh, language you can turn from English or, or German, Deutsch. But I don't. They always got that thing because just in case they send a guy from Germany, if we're not available, then he can. Maybe he works with this better with the with the uh, German on there. Uh, data transfer. This is more so basically. Uh, this is basically telling you uh, what's all, what's all selected. If the package height is measured, it's too small, too big. Package has been uh, uh, stretched. If it's coming from lateral feed or feeding line, which I never gonna get lateral feed because I don't have a lateral feed. Uh, top sheet received. Uh, that's with that's if you got the uh, if you got a top sheet on top of it, but y'all don't have that. Y'all don't have the top sheet. Uh, and label received. Y'all don't have a label, so y'all don't have that. Uh, POC status. I don't know if I should really even go into this. Y'all don't need to go into this. This is basically if I wanted to say, hey, check if this input is actually on. Y'all can put the input in, and I can it'll give you a one or something, and it shows it's on or not. But when it if it ever comes to that, we we really never use it. We rather do all that type of stuff on site, so never really use it. Diagnostics. This tells it during the uh, during the step positions of of hooding or going into home position. It, it flags through these all all of these things one one by one. So if it stopped in one thing, you can actually see where it stopped at. Uh, converter status. This is all the motors. Um, if you got a fault on one of them, more than likely it'll be like a three or something like that, or a four or whatever. You can tell us the converter status, and that'll tell us if you uh, that'll tell us if if, if it's uh, what the what the fault is. We can go look up at the we can go look at the fault, right? So right now two means that it has power and that it's running. You got statuses for your crimping motors and film road drive, but that don't. They don't have statuses because your crimping motors are uh, all contactors, so they don't have statuses. And that's it for this general settings right here. The Boimer toolbox, y'all really, y'all never really need to see that. Uh, let's go back to machine parameters. Like I said, don't need to touch them. Okay. So hood lid, we talked about that already. Your stretch carriage, crimping position, 